Spaceman has just hit Netflix and I'm not gonna lie, I was shocked at what I watched. It was so different to how I thought it was gonna be and it moved me in ways that I'm really looking forward to describing. The atmosphere of this film was just so calm and soothing and it really captured the loneliness that Jakob was feeling in space and I just felt at peace for an hour and 40 minutes. With there being a deeper meaning to what we watched unfold within the story and there being many different things you can take away from it, let's jump out of this world and head towards the beginning and the end and every vibration that there's ever been and will ever be and break down Spaceman. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The meaning of the ending. Well, there are a few different things that can be taken away from the ending of the film. I'm going to start by saying that it was very interstellar-esque, but it wasn't as smooth or impactful as the Nolan feature. This felt a bit more pieced together and ambiguous, which is maybe the route that it was going for, because I saw in an interview with the creator that they said that they wanted the viewer to almost question if any of it was even real, and I think there's arguments for both sides of that. Jakob was a cosmonaut and it was something that he'd always dreamed of doing, going to the edge of Jupiter. However, his desire to have his dream career is what ultimately pushed a barrier between himself and his wife Lenka. After spending six months on board a ship that was taking him to the purple spectre that had haunted the sky for four years, Lenka had decided to not answer any of his calls and to leave him. She actually recorded a message saying that she was done with him, but the space agency wasn't playing it to him because they feared what he might do, especially whilst being so close to completing the mission. This is where Hanush comes into the equation. A spider-type creature that appeared upon the shuttle that was traveling because their planet was taken over by the Grompets, which caused him to flee. Hanush had the ability to see the pain and loneliness that Jakob was feeling, and they were intrigued by it. So much so that it was only by Hanush causing Jakob to face the very thing that he cared about most, which was Lenka, that he began to change as a person. The repeated motif and promise, which was, you go where I go and I go where you go, was something which was at the center of Jakob and Lenka's relationship. But he broke it by going on this space mission, and also by not being there for her when she needed him most, such as when they lost their first child. He thought that mission was the very thing that he wanted in life, but whilst on the edge of the universe at the farthest point humankind had ever been, he realized that whilst he thought what was in front of him was what he wanted more than anything, it wasn't the case. The one thing he wanted wasn't there, and that was Lenka. We saw Jakob's memories being shown to us in the form of how one would imagine a spider seeing it. That's what I'm guessing that weird visual effect was, because it was all warped and like it was being looked at through multiple different eyes. You could say that Jakob was a very selfish individual in the sense that he was never really honest with Lenka, didn't make the effort to feel her pain, get to know her properly, or properly open himself up to her. He was just solely focused on himself and the mission that he wanted to eventually go on. Hence the self-inflicted nature of his loneliness and why Hanush grew tired and bored of him, because he wasn't changing and realizing what was wrong within. Jakob's character was properly revealed even further when we found out that Hanush was dying and they didn't reveal it to Jakob because he never properly asked about them. However, right at the end, Jakob essentially put his own life at risk so that he could get Hanush from outside the ship and back into safety. However, that wasn't possible. Together, they went through the purple cloud, which was being called the beginning. And whilst within it, they both experienced every vibration of all time, the beginning and the end, as well as all memories that Jakob had ever experienced. This was the interstellar part of the movie. And whilst we saw that it was the end for Hanush as the Grompets consumed him, it was actually a new beginning for Jakob, as he emerged out the other side after looking like he was on the verge of death, as he was found by the South Korean astronauts that were there, hoping to do the same thing that Jakob and the cosmonauts were doing by collecting a sample of the purple dust. From here, he phoned Lenka and said that if he had have known what he knows now, he never would have left. And she responded by saying, if I'd have known what I know now, would I have kissed you? And then when asked if she would by Jakob, she said, it was a really good kiss. And the movie cut to black, showing that she was probably willing to give their marriage another go if he came back to Earth. It took Jakob to go to the furthest point nobody had ever been in the universe and become the loneliest man in the world to basically realize that he loved his wife and to stop being selfish. It is a far-fetched story, I know, and I think that's why it just doesn't really pack the punch, because it's kind of inconsequential. It's just a bit extreme at its core. However, there was also more to it than just the relationship with Lenka that was being explored. It was him changing as a person and him also coming to terms with his father's death and realizing that he'd spent his life living a life for somebody that was dead, his father. 
rather than for himself and Lenka, which is why we also saw the change in mindset too. He felt he had to be twice the man that he was because of the actions that his father committed when he was alive, and it was almost as if he was doing it because he wanted him to be forgiven for his sins. Hence the more closed off, reserved attitude because of the trauma that he went through when he was younger. However, this experience showed that opening up can be a good thing and that you need people in your life. Is Hanoush real? To be honest, it's one of those things where Hanoush could be real or they could not be, and it wouldn't actually make a bit of difference to the story whatsoever. So I like to think that Hanoush was real. Jakob was at a place in the universe which was so far away from anybody else that maybe there was a chance that there could have been an explorer from another world which stumbled across him and was intrigued by the feelings that he was experiencing and wanted to work out exactly what Jakob was like and contribute to him changing. But I also like the idea of Hanoush just being within Jakob's imagination. Jakob was extremely lonely, the loneliest man in the universe as quoted by the girl at the start. So what's to say that after spending six months on your own so far away from everybody where all you've got are your own thoughts, where you think about your past experiences and your regrets, that you don't just then start to question how you've lived your entire life? And Hanoush just could have been the personification and characterization of his inner thoughts but being expressed back towards him. Within the original book, I believe Hanoush is said to be real, but I genuinely think that it's open for interpretation, and in this instance, there is no right or wrong answer. It's just how you perceive it, personally. Overall review I really enjoyed this film. My main takeaway from it was just how peaceful, tranquil, and calming of a film it was. The score in the background was just so soothing, and it really captured the slightly uncomfortable mindset that Jakob had, but also the beauty of having this environment around you, which was just remarkable. Paul Dana as the voice of Hanoush was something which also contributed to that peaceful nature which was present. His voice was just perfect for the role, and every time he'd say, skinny human, it just made me laugh. There was no emotion in his voice whatsoever, yet it had so much emotion to it, it's hard to describe. Adam Sandler and Carey Mulligan also delivered great performances too. What is it with Carey Mulligan at the moment? I feel like she's been in loads of the big ones recently. I'm not complaining because she's great, but I can't be the only one that's noticed that. Saltburn, Maestro, and now this. In terms of the story, I thought it was powerful, but it was blunted by the ending. I thought it built up so much power, weight, and atmosphere that you needed an interstellar level ending for it to land, and I just don't really think it had that. The message was clear and powerful, but the actual structuring of it on screen and within the story, it just felt a little bit odd and pieced together. Going through the purple cloud and ending up right where he was able to be rescued, I think I would have actually preferred it if he had died at that moment. Died becoming the person that he always should have been his entire life. Because if you think about it, he reconciled with his wife on the phone by telling her how he truly felt. He absolved his father of his sins and also his. And he thought of Hanoush by going into the open after them and also giving them the hazelnut spread because he knew that it was soothing for them in their final moments. But that can't be changed. But I do prefer that as an ending. Do I think this film will be remembered? Honestly, probably not. It's had some mediocre reviews and I think that will cloud its future. Plus, the similarity with Interstellar just means that it's always going to be compared to it, especially the ending. But I don't think it's a bad story at all. I think it's moving, powerful, and allows us to see the transformation of a man haunted by his past, which was shaping his future in a negative way and had to overcome it. So, there you have it. Spaceman ending explained and true meaning. I rated this movie on Letterboxd, and if you want to see what I rated it, then head over to my profile. As I said, it's divisive, so you might not be able to guess what I gave it. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.